In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. In the scripture reading from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, it begins, the lesson today begins with an interesting observation by Paul. Although it wouldn't have been surprising at the time, I would say that for us in our time and place and culture, it is a little surprising. He talks about an obligation that has been laid on him. Now, in our culture, we think that when we do things because we choose to do them, that that is a grander gesture than doing them because we are obligated to do them. And that isn't the way it was in Paul's time. The idea was that if you did something of your own free will, then your reward was that you did something of your own free will. If instead you did something like follow the commandments, because they were commandments, because it was an obligation put on you, and it was against your will, but you still did it, then there was a greater reward. Now, I know that's counterintuitive to us. We think that if somebody tells us we must do something, we're like, wait a minute, I don't want to do that just because somebody told us we must. But if we choose to, we say, now I'm the big person who chose to do this thing. So this idea of choice versus obligation is something to be mindful of. And yet what it goes on to say is that if I do this not of my own will, I will be entrusted with a commission. Another version says entrusted with a stewardship. Now, once again, I'm thankful for the lectionary that has imposed in it this word commission on the particular Sunday we have chosen to commission our vestry. (laughs) The question is, are they doing it by choice or by obligation? (laughs) Somehow I have a feeling that the numbers in our parochial report of membership might look a little different is as if everybody who signs up gets a number and it's just a matter of time before your obligation comes up to serve. But I am thankful for those who are serving in this leadership ministry. And we gathered together last weekend to start our work in earnest. And one of the first things we did that first evening we were together was we looked at a text from Luke's Gospel, um, chapter 10, um, verses 1 through 11. And this is the passage where Jesus sends out the 70 in pairs, right? This isn't work we do on our own. This is work we do with others. And so Jesus sent out the 70 in pairs and instructed them to take no bag, no extra clothes, no extra sandals, and to talk to nobody along your journey and to go and find people in other places to be in relationship with. And in doing this, there are a couple of things in play. One is there's a you're enough message in that. It's not, we don't have to bring the trappings of grandeur, of all that we can. We, without an extra cloak or extra shoes or 
a bag with money and resources isn't what's important. What's important is that we are sent out to go and be in relationship with others. And then it, it goes on to say, to eat whatever is placed in front of you. Now for us, that's just good manners. I reflect back to a time when I was in about sixth grade and I spent the night at a friend's house and they served stuffed bell peppers. Well, I am not a bell pe pepper girl, and I wasn't then either, but believe you me, I ate every bite. But that isn't what this passage is talking about. Remember, in these times, religious traditions were separated from one another in many ways, and one of the ways that the Hebrew people were separated was by their dietary rules and restrictions. They kept kosher, as it were. And so to be instructed as you're sent out to eat whatever is placed before you is a clear instruction that it's more important that you be in relationship with people than that you hold on to the specifics of a particular religious piety. Let that sink in for a minute. I think it's often one of the things that gets in the way of relationship is the way we have a particular way of seeing the world or understanding how we should be. And in this instruction by Jesus, he's saying it's more important that you go and be in relationship. And we hear a similar message in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians today, when he says, to the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I may win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I myself was under the law of God and under Christ's law. And to the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. Now to be clear, this isn't to say you go in and be inauthentic and make believe that you're something you're not. Just like, I don't know, like you go to the Super Bowl party this evening and you act like you're rooting for the Patriots. <laughs> you don't have to do that on my account. Instead, it is to say who you are matters to me. I care about the perspective and the perspective and position that you're coming with. And I will open myself up to that in order to be in a relationship with you. It's not to be dishonest about who we are, but it's to open ourselves up to be in a relationship with others. And what is the reward? Well, the reward is that we're living into the gospel. We're living into the work of sharing the good news. And the good news, in Jesus' words, well, the Episcopal Church's words anyway, is that all are welcome. The message of Jesus is to open up the boundaries, to not let those things that can often get in our way of a relationship be the reason we're not in relationship. And turning to Mark's gospel, we have this beginning of Jesus' ministry. We're still in the first chapter, Yet much has happened. Last week, Jesus went into the synagogue and was teaching and was recognized as one with authority, with authority beyond that of the scribes. And then he cast out demons. And then they said, who is this guy who's teaching a new teaching? And then today, 
immediately after his time in the synagogue, he goes into the home of Andrew and Simon, and their mother is ill, and he lifts her up, and she's healed, and she can go back to her purpose, which is when you have a house full of people, taking care of their needs. Hospitality, that's her role, and that's her purpose. And so I would imagine, and then that evening we have the whole town is gathered outside the door, and he's healing people. People are being brought to him all over the place. Can you imagine what that would feel like? He's right at the beginning of his ministry. I mean, that's got to feel pretty good. Everybody's coming to see him, right? He's got to get a little puffed up, right? You get a little excited about this. And so then there's this moment. It says, all of that happened, and what does Jesus do the next day? He gets up in the wee hours, and he goes to a quiet place to pray. He has a decision to make. Stay where he is, absorb the enthusiasm and the fame and the excitement that comes with that, or continue on proclaiming to yet other people. And so they, it says, every, when the disciples come and find him, they say, everyone is searching for you. And Jesus says, let us go on to neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. So even Jesus takes time to discern, to regroup, and to make sure he continues on the path of purpose that he was called to. Turning back to last weekend's vestry retreat, we spent time looking back at the work that has been done here by Church of the Servant, exploring what might be possible for the future. So a time several years ago where there was discernment around what might be next and what might be the right next steps. We spent some time talking now in the present time of what might be next. And then we spent time looking within, saying, where am I personally in my own vocation and what gifts do I bring to the ministry of Church of the Servant? And at this point in time in the life of this church, we are at this moment to regroup. I've been here five months as of tomorrow. It was three months ago that we had the I'm in moment, which some of you may still have a little bit of paint on your hands from when you went and made your mark on the wall of my office that I get to walk into every day and see this joy-filled handprints that tell me who is sharing ministry in this place. And so in the days and weeks ahead, we're going to be doing some checking in. The great thing about those times of checking in is they don't last a long time, but they're so important for us to sort of regroup and see what's our next purpose. What, where, what are we up to? Where is the direction that we want to be heading in? And today, we will be commissioning the vestry. They are a subset, a microcosm of all of us. And so as we commission them, we're truly commissioning all of us in shared ministry. We, like Paul, are entrusted with a stewardship, with an obligation, and yet we do it free of choice. And so I invite you into this time of exploration, this time of discernment, um, and we'll continue to ask again and again, what is our purpose? 
and are you in? Because that is what shared ministry is about, and that is what dis- determining who and how God would have us be is intended. God has a purpose for us. We live it every day, and we'll see what's next in the days ahead. Amen.